everyone. Welcome to this week's real estate Q&A. We have done something super fun this week. We actually jumped on the TikTok bandwagon. Yeah, I'm you know, I'm kind of wondering everybody's telling me don't be on TikTok, but I feel like we're late to the party, but we're on it. So if you guys like TikTok, check us out. It's fun. It's fun to now be in that inner circle, the TikTok circle, and now you get to see all the fun stuff that you wouldn't normally see on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and check us out on all the social media platforms. I mean, yeah. we do have a pretty decent presence. We do? Not really. Kind of? Maybe. <laughs> We have a new website that's getting ready to launch. That's kind of cool. We're very the next couple excited. Of weeks. Yeah. Yes. So yep. online courses, yep. some gear, yep. Saks gear. Yep. There's going to be a lot of resources for you to help you along the way in your real estate journey. Yeah. Hey, well, let's dive in. So every week we try now to take our top five comments. I wouldn't say top five, but just top five comments that we feel that would affect a lot of our listeners that maybe you might have the same questions in mind and we try and address them. And so here we go. Okay, we're ready for Did it. Did anybody give me a hard time this week? Uh, no, actually, you guys all were well behaved. So we appreciate that. Yeah, from old man. And that, that was our actually our first post on TikTok. Yeah. Old man vibes shouting at the clouds or some crazy. Some crazy, know. but that's okay. Don't hold back. We yeah. do love it. It's entertaining right. for us. Yeah. 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 But we're going to start here with our first question um, that came through for the past week. It starts off by saying, I see a lot of realtors who have made huge sums of money from larger commission checks, but who have not had to work any harder for those commission checks. It seems like there should be a flat fee rate for realtors. The same seems like it should be true for title companies. How much more complex is it to run a title search on a house if it's worth $140,000 or if it's worth 500,000. Can you explain this? Yeah, well, I can't speak to the title company. That's up to them to determine, you know, what their rates are and things like that. But I know real estate agents, most of them work very hard. So I know, you know, uh, people look at the commission check and they think, wow, you know, that was a big amount of money. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Uh, everybody's brokerage, they set their own fees. So, um, you know, negotiate away, I guess, is what I can say to that. But I can tell you that real estate is is very, it's a hard job. So there's a lot of costs that the public doesn't see, um, you know, but the main thing is, is that if you take a buyer, for instance, I mean, I mean, some agents were driving buyers around for months. Yeah. And, you know, basically there's no money involved, you know, uh, that I know of for that, at least not with us. And, um, you know, and then multiple offers. I mean, sometimes, you know, 10 or 15 offers uh, just to get, one offer accepted. So, I mean, I look, I don't like to speak about commissions. It is negotiable with you know, with us. Uh, I don't want to talk about anybody else's fees, but I can say that our people work very hard. We represent our clients. And I always say that, I mean, we earn our commission. So a lot of times if you're looking at that check, um, you know, I like to say for me personally, uh, you know, I'm worth every penny that, uh, that we get. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of controversy about the topic. And I can tell you there are, if you want to Google it, I mean, there is there is a class action lawsuit that's going on right now um, just about this topic and, you know, buyer uh, agency and, you know, commissions and things like that. And uh, yeah, so anyway, mm -hmm. that's all I can say on that. Moving right along, we had a question about commercial real estate. We had a viewer ask, who pays these bills on empty commercial buildings? Well, the building owner pays the bills on empty space. Uh, you may have a lease, they or they may have a lease uh, intact with a tenant that's defaulted. But I mean, good luck trying to ca capture that money. Um, I mean, this is a problem. We see a lot of vacancy in commercial space, especially in office space, uh, where a lot of people are working from home still. And you know, the the pandemic really accelerated that, and uh, there are a lot of vacancies. I think a lot of these building owners are in trouble. You know, this is in the news right now. We're talking about bank collapses and uh, a lot of the regional banks, the smaller regional banks, they actually portfolio, which means that they hold the loans in-house for commercial real estate. And though a lot of these uh, buildings are owner-occupied where, you know, the business or the, the one on the hook for the mortgage has their business as one of the tenants, um, sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they have the whole building. Sometimes they are just a tenant uh, and part of the space. But you know what the big talk is right now is that since interest rates have gone up, 
you know, a lot of these, I think, you know, what the other night we had a real estate attorney said that like 25% of the commercial loans are up for renewal this right. year by the end or fourth quarter of 2023. And for a lot of these building owners, the banks are going to be reassessing uh, whether they are interested in refinancing the property. And, you know, for these building owners that have had a lot of vacancy, uh, what the problem with that is, is that their income statement has dropped, their profit and loss. So their profits have gone down, their costs have gone up. So for a lot of these that are coming up for renewal, the banks are going to be reconsidering the loan based on income, based on if that property's value has declined. And they may, in a lot of cases, require the, uh, you know, the building owner to put down a pretty sizable chunk of cash uh, that they may not have in order to refinance or they'll be in default of the loan. So I think that the big wave that we have coming with commercial real estate is going to be focused around office style buildings. Um, and I think that um, we're going to see a big fallout of commercial space here this year and especially going into 2024. Let's dig into your answer to that question just a little bit, because we did have a viewer who asked, how will spillage of commercial real estate failure transition to housing, transition to auto and labor markets? Yeah, you know, if it's office space, I don't think it'll transition too much into, you know, um, the residential side, because a lot of these people are working from home. Uh, so, you know, as far as the auto and labor markets, you know, it's all going to come down to is there going to be massive job loss because of, you know, buildings being repurposed? You know, the, the ones that will be affected the most will be the, you know, landscapers that cut the grass or the cleaning companies that, you know, regularly clean the office space or the commercial space. But I don't see where that will be a major impact. Uh, you know, I think what's coming down in the near future uh, will determine, you know, whether a lot of these uh, retail spaces become, you know, bust, you know, whether the businesses will be going out of business, that will, in my opinion, directly affect more of the workforce, which will spill over into residential and, uh, you know, the uh, labor markets and the auto market. Uh, but, you know, if we look at it this way, you know, you may see restaurants in your town that are really busy and you may see restaurants that are struggling. And, and that's all I will clump in there with the retail sector, because, a lot of these retail type strip malls and, you know, outside shops and things like that are really dependent on traffic from, you know, restaurant anchors, pad sites, things of that nature. And I know, you know, several restaurants that are typically booked out weeks in advance, just local to my home. And, you know, you can get in now on a moment's notice, even on a Friday night or yeah. Saturday night. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. But as far as, you know, what I think right now, the, the main focus where I think we're going to see the biggest struggle will be in the office space um, and how that will be repurposed. Uh, but um, time will tell. We did have a viewer make a lot of comments in one question, but we want to extract a little bit of that. Do you see the Fed pausing or hiking one or more times the rest of the year? I have been hearing a lot of speculation of waiting on something to break. Is that breaking point the commercial real estate? This is the everything bubble. So I think if they are waiting on something to break and that something does, then so many things will domino right behind. You know, I think, you know, um, and to, this kind of ties into the last question. And I guess... You know, what What I failed to mention in the last question is how it could affect the housing market. And, and it can, but I don't know that it's directly related to the commercial real estate industry or just debt in general. Uh, but I think the big thing to consider here is as banks start to struggle and, you know, banks don't want to own real estate. Uh, so when we're looking at these regional banks that portfolio the commercial loans, Lending in general, the standards will be tightening. So we're going to have, you know, tighter lending practices, which means that the requirements in order to get a mortgage, and that will spill over into the residential side eventually, um, will get tighter. But the big card here is, you know, how much will the Fed or, you know, uh, FHA, the government step in to, you know, uh, make some type of subsidy uh, for the residential housing market. And these subsidies will keep the market strong. It will prevent it from crashing. I mean, we know now that the Biden plan, and you know, there's a lot of controversy to this one, 
where some people are saying that, you know, hey, look, if uh, you have good credit, you're now being penalized because your closing costs or your loan origination fees are going to be a lot more than they were just a week ago. And, you know, and if you have bad credit or you're, you know, questionable, a higher risk, you know, borrower, as far as the lender's standards go, they're dropping those costs. And the question is, you know, are the people with good credit scores paying for the ones that have lower credit scores? You know, these are the types of sort of um, slid in policy, you know, changes that, you know, people aren't really paying attention to. Um, it's not getting, you know, mainstream media coverage. Uh, so, you know, these are the kinds of things that the federal government um, is trying to do, FHA, trying to do to try and not let this market collapse. Because understand something, you know, real estate is a huge market. Um, it's a big financial market. So with the election year coming up, um, you know, the last thing this current administration wants to see is, you know, massive foreclosures, big fallouts. We already know that, you know, we're still seeing that there's, you know, all, many states have, you know, money available for people that are struggling from their mortgages. When Biden signed it into office back in 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act, um, it allowed the states to have, you know, almost $10 billion dollars of money that was available for the states to divvy out. I know here locally in Maryland, it was $60,000 per household that they could still tap into um, that were, you know, pandemic related, you know, uh, uh, struggles, you know, to cover things like your mortgage payment, your insurance, your taxes, your HOA or condominium dues. So these are a lot of the measures why we're not seeing foreclosures because delinquencies are there. Uh, you know, struggles are there. Delinquencies are, are there. You know, serious delinquencies over 90 days are there. This is one of the reasons why the FHA is recasting these defaulting, you know, mortgages, if they're FHA mortgages, into 40 year now uh, mortgages this month. Uh, they'll be starting to implement that. So, you know, but getting back to it, everybody's sitting on the sidelines saying, when's my opportunity to buy? Should I buy now? Should I wait? Uh, you know, I think eventually this is going to catch up. Uh, you know, we know that affordability is low. We know that interest rates are high. Uh, we know that there's only so much that can take place to help someone to afford, you know, a costly down payment and closing costs and mortgage payments and things like that based on today's interest rates and today's home prices. But, you know, kind of getting back to it, the catalyst will commercial real estate be that catalyst that throws the residential housing market into shambles. I think it's all working together, but I don't think it's directly impacted. The housing market is very interest rate sensitive, and that is the number one reason, guys, that we've seen sales halt over 30% on average nationwide and in some markets a lot more than that so you may still be seeing houses going for over list price um, we're still not seeing the craziness we saw a year ago and we are seeing a lot of markets are you know they've definitely fallen um, you know in some cases 10 percent or more from peak to uh, I won't say trough yet because I don't think we're there uh, but you know you're all your basic needs are everyone's individual needs are different uh, you know, if you're saying that you're saving money, that's great. If you're saying that you're renting, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, wait until the inventory opens up. I think that the big thing that we'll see is a lot of the second home inventory should start hitting the market. And we know by a lot of um, a lot of polls, a lot of research right now, that the, like the number one reason why people aren't letting, they've bought something else, but they haven't sold anything, their existing houses, because they're struggling getting rid of those two and a half, 2.75% fixed rate uh, mortgages, 30-year mortgages. They're, they will let go of those eventually because they'll have to. You know, as, as costs are going up, as, you know, taxes are raising, insurance is raising, um, once they start getting a taste of what landlording is like, and they get their bad first bad experience. Guys, we're only a year into this, right? This started around May, June of last year when we really saw the peak. So, you know, everybody wants to say, see, I told you the real estate market won't drop. Nothing's going to happen. We're, we're not even a year into from the peak, right? And we still have this stimulus that's hanging out there. We still have these programs that they're trying to not have foreclosures. So we're, we're, we're far, we, we are... I guess one black swan event away from watching a complete collapse in our economic system and the housing market will be 
atop of that, I believe. With you mentioning interest rates, that's a perfect segue into our next viewer's question. Why do people care about interest rates? It's all about the housing price. Well, it is. And that's what we've said from the beginning. Guys, what is happening here is that the mortgage industry has really injected this concept of, you know, it's only about the payment. Can you afford the monthly payment? And if you can afford the monthly payment, go for it. What they don't tell you and what your agent may not tell you, unfortunately, is should you need to sell that house, you know, in two years or three years or less than five years, you may be underwater. So they're not, they're not saying that, right? They're not having you sign some kind of affidavit that you were advised that if you have to sell in two years, if one of you lose your job and it becomes unaffordable, that you will be able to sell your home and pay off the mortgage. It may not be the case. That's the problem. So that's why price is so important over interest rate. If you get a good price right now, and you can afford the payment, but you you know that you can build equity or that you will get appreciation in three or four years, two or three or four years down the road, and you're in that kind of a situation, that's a, a very strong position to be in, right? It's difficult right now. That's the problem. But if you can find that, that's where you want to be because you can pay 7% for your 30-year mortgage. If it does drop back to 5.5% at the end of 2024, and you have the equity in the home, you can refinance a lot easier than if you're underwater. And they're not telling you that. So if you're underwater on your home, that means that you go to refinance and your home is actually worth less than what you paid. You will probably need to come out of pocket to meet the new requirements, the you know debt to income ratio, the you know uh, loan to home value ratio. A lot of these ratios are going to come back around. The house is going to get reappraised. Everything's going to be reassessed, including your financial ability to pay, and that will affect your ability to refinance. Guys, a lot of people aren't letting you know this. So mm-hmm. you know, home price most important. Always, always, always. Location, 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 and buy low, sell high. They're the two golden rules of real estate, no matter whether you're an investor or a homeowner, in my opinion. Now, I will say real estate, you know, from a homeowner standpoint is a lifestyle. So, you know, I may get some pushback with that or some argument, valid points. uh, But I can tell you that for many people, they're hoping that their home is the single most important investment that they ever make in their life. And that's what we've been taught from childhood. So there you have it, guys. Those are five questions from this week's real estate Q&A. And if I can, don't forget to check us out on TikTok. Yay! So, you know, whatever. I don't know whether it's a page, a channel, or whatever you call it, whether you like, follow, or subscribe, but check it out, and uh, we'll have more content coming. Yeah, comment down below. Let us know what you think. All right, guys, we always appreciate when you subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already done so, you can do it now and hit that alert bell. You'll know every time we upload content just like this. See you next time. See you next time. Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.